welcome to the second video about the For Me development update of week 39. Now the reason why we made this additional video is because we got a lot of questions about the custom collections functionality. It appears that a lot of people have some difficulties really understanding what the use of this functionality is and asked us for a practical example. So let's look at a practical example. Now one of the use cases we hear a lot is that organizations have a large list of file shares that people can access and when someone is requesting access to a file share it really depends on the actual file share who needs to provide the approval for that access request. So they would like to maintain a list in Fumi listing all the file shares and their respective owners who can provide approvals to access requests. So how would you handle such a scenario with the new custom collections functionality? The first thing you would do is define a new custom collection. In my case, I called it conveniently file shares. And it contains a few collection elements. Of course, in the real world, this would contain maybe hundreds or even worse, maybe thousands of entries. But three of them will do for showing you how this actually works. So you add some collection elements, which are basically the file shares for which you want to indicate who is the approver. So that is the first step. Create a collection and add the individual shares as a collection element. Now besides registering the actual file shares, you also want to maintain a list of the approver per file share. So for this you need a UI extension. So I went to UI extensions, add a new one uh, for the data type custom collection. I made the approver a person suggest field, which means that you can immediately select people from within for me. And it would also be nice to add an additional field that we can later on use in the custom views. So let's add an additional field, for example, a checkbox that indicates whether or not the file share contains sensitive documents. And let's make that one filterable and I will explain in a minute why this is useful. So add the field to the UI extension, save and activate and now we have both the person lookup field and the sensitive data field. Now as already explained yesterday the next step you should take is define a custom view and that view determines which entries from a custom collection will be visible in your UI extension. Um, so I already made a custom a view which is called file shares and what we also showed yesterday is that you can filter basically on the custom collection that should return the data but what you can also do is filter on UI extension fields that are linked to that collection. So let's say that I want to offer people with a drop down that only contains uh, shares that do not contain sensitive data, I can add an additional filter. So all the file shares that are indicated to contain sensitive data are now excluded from my list, uh, which is of course very useful if you want to offer different drop-down lists to different people in different kind of templates. The next step is to actually maintain the collection elements and indicate who is the approver for which file share. Of course in real life you would do this via an import but for now let's do some manual work. So you open the first one, you see that the fields coming from the UI extension are visible in your collection entry. You can check whether or not such a file share contains sensitive data. You see that I already populated the approver, but of course I can uh, select different uh, people as well. I can even select multiple people, but that is for a later case. So for each individual share, I have to indicate who is the approver and whether or not this file share contains sensitive data. If I want to use different custom views, of course. The next two steps are pretty straightforward. That is just normal template UI extension work. 
So you would create a UI extension that you are going to use in a request template. So basically it is just a drop down that you can uh, populate with the custom collection views. So in this case you can select the file share for which you want to request access. And as a next step you would create a request template in where you populate some fields, select the UI extension that you just created so people can use your search suggest field to select the file share to which they want to request access. So all the necessary records are now created. The next step is to create an automation rule that will look up the approver based on the file share that the requester selected. So let's go to the action menu, automation rules, and here we see that we have an automation rule in place. So let's look at what this automation rule is actually doing. The trigger is on create, so every new request that is created using this template will fire this automation rule. We define the condition as the status should be equal to assigned. The file share is the custom field that we retrieve from the form. So we, this is the actual file share that the requester selected. And then we basically do two find actions. The first one, let's split this up in multiple parts. The first one is we look in a custom collection element for the file share that the requester selected. So that's the first step. As soon as we have that custom element, we look at the UI extension field approver. So that is the UI extension field that is linked to the collection element. That will return the ID of the person that is indicated as the approver for the selected file share. So we should do one additional lookup and that is look for the actual name of the person based on the approver ID. So in a real world scenario, you would then link this approver to the approval task for gaining access to that file share. Let's keep it simple in our case and just add a note to the request uh, to show um, ourselves that we successfully identified the approver using this automation rule. So the final step is to verify whether or not this actually works. So let's create a new request for Matt Leach, select personal computing service. The request access to file share template is here. We can select a file share. Let's take the everyone file share. Click save and now the automation rule is triggering and identifies the approver from the collection as Howard Tanner. So as a final step, let's verify whether or not that entry is actually correct. So let's go to the custom collection elements, look at the everyone file share. You see that the approver is indeed Howard Tanner. And to be really sure, the approver for the other file shares is people different than Howard Tanner. So by this, we have proved that this functionality actually works. So hopefully this additional video gave you some clarification about the new functionality and some use cases in which this could be useful. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of the week and see you next time.